Okay, this investigation is called the ice cube investigation. You will need a large bowl, hopefully a glass one, if you can, so you can see through it, some cling film, some ice, and um, some hot water. So I've just boiled the kettle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that boiling water or warm water from a tap, should be fine too, into the bowl, uh, fill it about half full. Then I'm gonna place my cling film over the top and place some ice cubes onto that cling film. Then we're going to observe the processes that we think are happening um, for here. So I'll just grab the kettle. Right, so I'm going to pour my boiling water into the bowl, like so. You might be able to notice the process already. So we've got the water is going into the bowl. What's coming out of the kettle? What process is occurring there? I'm then going to cover the bowl with my cling film like so, trying to make it nice and secure. Obviously you will need an adult to help you with this one as it involves using hot water from a kettle or from the tap. So just make sure um, not to finish their work before you ask them, okay? Right, so I've now got that cling film on there. You might be able to see Something's happened on the cling film. What do we think this is? What process is this? I'm trying. Not, I'm going to try and not tell you any answers during this video, so that you can see if you can observe the processes yourself. So that when it comes to writing up on the sheets, um, you're doing the work yourself. Okay. So write what you see, and, and obviously everything that we've talked about in the PowerPoint. Now I'm going to put some ice. I'm going to try and break the ice up a little bit on the top and we're going to see what happens. So, first piece of ice, second piece of ice, and third piece of ice. Okay, and then I'm gonna pick you up so you can see this a little bit clearer. So we've got the ice on the top. Think about what state is the ice in, what state, okay and what then might be happening to it. The other thing, the other process that you might be able to see, obviously if you're doing this, you'll be able to um, see it much clearer. If we look into the bowl, what can you observe that's happening on the sides of the bowl here? And that is because of the, the state of the water here. What state is that in? Think of its temperature, then what is happening to that process, what changes are occurring. Okay, so we don't need to time anything, um, but we can just watch to see the processes happening. You also can see this clings through, cling film is not see-through anymore. So what's happened on the other side of the cling, cling film? Obviously, if you do this yourself, you'll be able to see much, much Clearer. Sorry, my camera skills are not great. So we can see here, if you can see that on my finger, the ice is changing. What is it changing from and to? And therefore, what is the process called? Um, I think we've seen enough. So have a go at this one at home and then write up your results on the sheet. Okay, for this next mini investigation, it's called salt and ice. You will need two containers, preferably see-through if you can, and some ice. And if you can, if you've got one, a thermometer. If you don't have a thermometer, don't worry, you can use the results from my investigation um, when you're writing up on your sheets, that's fine. So what you need to do is place some ice in both the containers, make sure you're putting the same amount of ice in to make sure the test is fair. And then we are going to put some, oh, I forgot to say, you need some salt. We are going to put some salt into one of the pots on top of, on top of the ice in one of them. And we're then going to measure the temperature, record the temperature and see if there are any changes. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to put my ice in. A few cubes in each one. Again, you will obviously be able to see this much better if you're able to do it at home. I think I'm going to go for three ice cubes. In each one, pile those together quite nicely, and then three in this one, one and 
tape. And three. Okay, I need a teaspoon and I'm gonna put some ice, um, not ice, I'm gonna put some salt onto one of them. So I'm going to put the salt onto this one, a good teaspoon of salt, sprinkle the salt on there. And then I'm going to start recording the temperature. I'm gonna try and hold you as steady as I can, but you can see there's one with salt in, one with no salt in. So if I leave the thermometer in the middle of that one there, just trying to get the ice around it. See the thermometer is just there. Where at the moment, it's going down. I've actually got a second thermometer, but I'm not sure if this one's going to balance in here. Oh, yes, it will. Perfect. That's good. So I've got my two thermometers going. I'm just going to leave them a moment, um, just so they've got time to adjust. I'm going to make sure that ice cube is nice and together. Keep the container. So I'm going to pop you back here for a moment. I'll show you again in a second. Um, but whilst this experiment is going on, um, there are a couple of questions I want you to think about, see if you can answer these. So what do you notice is, ha is happening to the ice cubes? Now, this will be much easier when you're doing it, but I'll show you in a second. There is definitely a difference in the two ice cubes in both of my containers. Um, so in a moment, you'll have a look. What do you think is happening? What process is therefore occurring and what states are, are changing? Um, what happened to the temperature in the different glasses? And that is something that we will look at in a moment. This one, as the thermometer is much, much, much longer, it's making it trickier for my ice cubes to balance. Um, but it should be able to record the temperature in exactly the same way. Okay, I'm just going to pick you up again and show you the difference in the ice cubes. So this is the ice cubes for the one with salt. What do you see? What's happened to those ice cubes? What process is occurring? And this is what the ice cubes looks like with no salt. So hopefully you can see the difference there. And actually, this is quite an interesting one. If you, um, if we ever have very icy days um, where it's very slippy, because of the ice outside, what do we put? What does what does Mr. Bell, he has sacks of the stuff, um, put on the school playground? Or mums and dads might put some on their drive um, to make it less slippy. And you also will see um, big, big, big trucks going around the roads distributing this um, so that the roads are not as slippy. What do you think is in there and why? Um, if you do know, comment on this video, I'd love to know. Um, but this investigation is actually showing you directly um, directly those processes and why um, we do those those things on icy days. Okay, so this one is going down to, I make that zero. This thermometer, I'm not convinced about. So we're gonna say, oh no, we've gone below zero. So this one is uh, minus three degrees. And then I'm just going to wipe it and then put it in the other one. I think using the same thermometer is going to make our test bearer. Let's have a look. Here we go. And that, oh, that thermometer is now going even lower. So it's gone down to about minus five. So it's colder in that one the one without any salt. And actually, you can see now before I just press stop, the differences in the ice, which is the most important observation and the most important process that you need to think about. So we've got the ice cubes there. We've got the ice cubes there. Okay, um, fill out the results to this investigate. We'll have a go if you can at home and then fill out your results on the sheet. Okay, our final mini investigation is called reversing changes. Now, like the first one, you will definitely, definitely need an adult to help you with this one, as it involves boiling, 
a kettle and using a kettle which has just been boiled so it um, can be very dangerous so please make sure an adult is there um, to show you this one you can do the observing and you can make a note of, of the changes that you see so what you need to do is your adult will need to boil the, ke the kettle um, as we know we have water in the kettle um, so that is the liquid state for water um, and as that water as that liquid heats up that liquid turns into a gas, which is called water vapour. Now we can see this gas come through the spout of the kettle, and I'm hoping you're going to see it in a moment um, as the kettle continues to boil. I'll bring it a little bit closer. But what we're going to try and do with this investigation is reverse that change. We're going to try our best, and hopefully you'll be able to see it on camera, but again, it will be better if you can do this at home. If we can turn water vapour into the gas, in back into a liquid, into water. Um, so I'm going to do this. For this activity, you will obviously use your kettle. You will also need a metal tray that's been in the freezer, and it's quite important that it's in the freezer, as then you have got a better chance of seeing that change in action. Um, so I've got my, my tray in the freezer, but I'm not going to get it just yet. I'm going to wait until the exact moment that I need it so that I can show you the change. I'm hoping we can see um, some water vapour appear from the kettle any moment. Now, I'm then going to talk about some questions related to reversing this change, and then you can fill out your answers on the sheet. There is a fourth box on the sheet for you, um, which shows all of the changes. I mean, a cycle sort of thing, so you can fill that out afterwards as well. Now my kettle sounds like it's almost ready to pop. So hopefully we will start to see some water vapour coming out soon. Can you remember what temperature um, water needs to be at to change from a liquid to a gas? That click tells me something. And if I bring this up here close to you, hopefully in, the, in that you can see the gas or something steam the water vapor escaping i'm going to pause you now and i'm going to go get my tray to then complete the activity okay i've got my tray from the freezer it's very cold obviously it's come from the freezer so i need to use um a tea towel to hold it because my fingers get a bit chilly so kettle has just boiled we've got that water vapor coming up i'm going to position the kettle so that that water vapor is going straight onto my cold tray and hopefully we can see the reversal of that change occurring on the tray. Now obviously having that tray being in the freezer quickens up this process because it means the water vapour is hitting a colder surface and you can see that happening now, you can see that spreading and Get it really, really nice and close. It's defrosting the tray for starters, isn't it? But what is the other process that's occurring? There are, there's a clue, there are some droplets forming on the surface of that tray. Hopefully you can see it there in the video, but that is proving that the water vapor is going from a gas back into a liquid. And I wonder if you can remember what that process is called. Hopefully you can. Okay, just do a little bit more and then I'll be able to show you close up. Just move that kettle out of the way so we're nice and safe. So hopefully you can see there's a bit of reflection. Yeah, you can definitely see those droplets of water. We have liquid on the tray. So that's been successful. So if you fill out, as I said, the um, processes on the sheet, if you draw a diagram, um, I hope you're able to do it at home too, as it's always good for you to see yourself. Um, and I hope you enjoy the science lesson today. Good luck, and I look forward to seeing your results.